We've been doing a series, and today's series is the importance of God's word. The importance of God's word. So good morning, church. This is the day the Lord hath made. I believe we're living in wonderful times, but also troubling times. And you'll say, well, Pastor Kerry, I don't understand what's going on. Well, let me explain. There's a sifting going on. God is moving through the entire planet, sifting between those that will love him and want him and those that will reject him. And we're going to see as the days approach and the Lord tarries, we're going to see an actual splitting where the dark is going to get darker and more corrupt and the light's going to get lighter. Jesus said, I'm separating the sheep from the goats. Everyone say, sheep from the goats. And everyone look at your neighbor, smile real big and say, you look like a sheep to me, you know. Amen. So now let me explain to you, everything that's in the scripture is there for our learning, is there to help us become a better Christian and walk with God better. Amen. To help separate the lies from the truth. So as we study the word, as we meet with God, this is my meet with God section over here. <laughs> then God begins to prepare us. He said, if you will sit with me, I will show you things to come. I'm convinced. Now, maybe you'll agree, maybe you're not. Don't throw me out of here. But I'm convinced that Satan has dumbed down the church on the word of God. They don't understand how the word is to be applied. They don't understand usurping, non-usurping, all of these things. And that's why... God said, when you begin to teach again, Pastor Kerry, when you, he calls me Kerry, and then he goes, son, when I'm in trouble. <laughs> he says, I want you to preach the pure word. I don't want you to put your opinion in it. If you do say it's my opinion, this is why I, I believe, which, so you can separate what is the word of God and how it's to apply. Many Christians, again, today, don't understand the difference between Old Testament and New Testament. Old Testament, they didn't have God in their heart, David. They were pursuing the Messiah. And they got so messed up because they, they thought that they were smarter. And when Jesus Christ actually showed up, they killed him. How about you? Do you get all stirred up where you want to kill somebody? You better get yourself delivered. You see, amen. And so Satan is working on the world to get us to separate to get us to hate each other, to divide from each other. And one of the things that the church of Jesus Christ needs to be doing is unifying. You don't need to be separated by little silly things. Whether I wear long hair or short hair isn't going to make you saved or less saved. You need to know what the important things are and what's not so really important. Amen. Now let me see the hands of those who've never made a mistake. Yeah, Dave, volu volunteer. What's he saying? He says, raise your hand, you're volunteering. <laughs> well, Jesus said it this way. You see, the people back in the Jewish time, they were constantly fault finders. They were constantly picking on each other's fault. And see, because I've studied and I've been in Israel, you'll find out that the Jewish people are funny. They're wonderful. But... Every five or six blocks is a new synagogue. And the pastor in that synagogue doesn't agree with another five or ten blocks up to the other synagogue. And oftentimes, they would take the word of God and beat each other with it. And if you read about Jesus, how he explains, you'll find out that he says, you have been told you shouldn't do this, but I say unto you, and you'll see things like that. And you'll go, what's the deal? The deal is God wants you to walk with him. He wants you to befriend him, to have such a relationship with him. It doesn't matter what anybody else does. It's you and God, baby. You understand? And no one's going to separate you with that relationship. All right. And it can be so blessed, others want to have what you have. Say amen. So we're going to be teaching you the importance of God's word. Would you take your Bible and go with me to John chapter 1? The book of John. There's John, and there's 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, 
And then the book of Revelation, all written by John, inspired by God. But this is the first gospel of John, all right? God created everything by his word. He spoke it into existence. In the beginning was the Father. Now listen carefully. Was the Father, was the Word, and was the Holy Spirit. Now a lot of people don't know for sure, and I, I'm not going to, it's not worth be, being divided over. Everyone say, no division. But listen, no compromise either. But listen, in the beginning, it was the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus wasn't the Son of God up there in heaven. He is now. Why? Because he always was. He wasn't born. <laughs> so he's called the Word. Everyone say the Word. Okay? The Father thought, the Word spoke, and the Holy Spirit brings it to pass. Hello? They all three work in absolute harmony, and you can't separate any of them. They all look at, like each other. They look like they're triplets, perfectly identical. And you say, well, Holy Spirit, he, he floats around, doesn't he? That's just an attribute of who he is, just like healing's an attribute of who Jesus is. Hello, do you walk with Jesus? How many walk with Jesus? Then healing is a part of your life. Getting healed and getting blessed is part of your life. Now, you're going to hear teaching. Now, before I get in, it's not a very long sermon. So before I get into it, you're going to hear teaching out there. Now, I'm not picking on anybody. That's going to say things like, well, God is giving you the hard times to show you where you're really at with him. How many ever heard something like that? Come on, raise your hands. Let me see. Everybody needs to see. How many know that's a lie? You know now that that's a very lie. Because you see, if you can't have perfect trust in God, and you think that God might be doing different things with you, then you'll never be able to relate to God in a friendship manner. God wants to be our friend. Remember, he came down, visited with Adam, and even the, in the cool of the day, he wants to be our friend. He created us for that very reason. And are we going to let the devil separate us all up from God? All get us conglomerated, get us to a portion that we can't sit still, we're not organized? Listen, when it comes time to Saturday night and you know church is Sunday, you're going to get the word of the Lord. You better make sure you don't mess up on Saturday night. You are not the Savior. I'm going to say this. The Holy Spirit wants me to say this. When we take matters in our hands, now I'm not picking on anybody, but listen. When we take matter in the hands, let me tell you, that's something I, I felt privy to. When we take matters in our hands and we do things without God really saying we should, we're becoming God. We're stepping out in front of God and we're doing things and God may not really, really be in it. Can you say amen? So we, we, we really want to watch, make sure that we're on the word. Now, one more thing before we really get into this. You got John? Okay, when you read the word, the word gives you the general guidance to your life. You have the Old Testament where you relate in the New Testament and you see all the mistakes and all the successes that they had and you'll learn from it. If you go to the New Testament, you see what Jesus says, how the believers acted out. Are you with me? So you need to understand in the Old Testament and the New Testament, we apply the word to make us successful and to keep us strong and protected. Say amen. So let me ask you, who's first in your life? What? What? Come on, you're not convincing me. That's what you should say when the devil lies to your head. God! That's right, Michael, you're a little slow, but that's, no. <laughs> Very good, brother, I love you. <laughs> hey, you guys can enjoy the word and have fun too, right? And, and realize Satan, how, how long ago was Satan destroyed? How long ago did Jesus, our elder brother, kick the devil and smash him? Over 2,000 years ago. So why are you letting him camp on your head? Running you ragged so you can't rest and sleep. 
I'll stop right there because the Holy Spirit's saying, you better pay attention to the word if you suffer that. Okay, so let's find out what God says. Say amen. John 1, verses 1 through 3. Listen. In the beginning was the, the Son of God. No, the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So when you and I speak the Word, we're speaking God. When you and I pray the Word, we're praying God. When you and I stand on the Word, we're standing under, on top of God's support. Can you say amen? So if you don't put the word with God first in your life, then you're going to operate in reasoning and trying to understand what you're going through, and you're going to miss it 90% of the time. It's the word that straightens out our thinking. It's the word that we line up our believing with to make sure we're not leaving something hang out. My folks used to always say to me, now, Carrie, don't leave your hands out the window when we're going on this road. Don't hang out the window, son. You know, back then they had no seatbelts. You know, I was hanging out everywhere. You know what? Oh, no, we don't want you to get whacked. Folks, haven't you learned what day it is? These are dangerous times, and you don't need to be hanging out the window playing gambling games with your life. You need to be subjected to God, make sure God builds your life up, and then let him breathe fun and excitement in you. I mean, I can just sit there and laugh and dance, and Satan can't do a thing about it. But what if he comes back and puts in a sneak attack? There you go, believing for it. So... You get to the word of God and let the word of God strain your thinking, refresh your thinking, so that you begin to think like God thinks. You begin to speak like God. You begin to walk like God. Amen. Not only that, but the Bible says that the rock followed the, the Israelites. That's the Old Testament. In the New Testament, the rock follows us underneath our feet. Wherever we go, David, God is. But because of our mind is so indisciplined, it's so self-centered at times, we find little things wrong with stuff and we get all agitated. Listen, you can't get your prayers answered when you're all agitated. And that's why Satan likes to stir you up. Stir him up. Little darling. Right? Amen. Get you to laugh a little bit because I got intense. All right, so let's... John 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through, see the word through him? When you do something, you do it through him. It, success, it becomes a success. A success. <laughs> I got the hiccups. When you do things through Christ, you go through a, a, a cleansing filter. So when you put you now listen, this will help you. When you put your hand through Christ or when you speak, speak through Christ, Christ is like, a, like a, a covering. And when you move through... See, when I lay hands on the sick, I don't see my hand. I see God going over my hand like a glove with his hand. And when I put it on there, I don't... I don't have to heal anybody, thank God. I just release God. Amen. When you're praying for somebody, you're not trying to get them healed. Better not. You just release God. God's the one that heals us. He's the one that saves us. He's the one that makes us better. Can you say amen? And the more we're exposed to him, the better off we become. That's why we can, we're, we're run ragged all the time. I venture to say, how many of you have actually spent a whole hour just worshiping and loving God? Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. That's just a challenge to you, okay? All right. All things are made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Do you hear that? So the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit all work in the creation. Now drop down to verse 14. Remember, God spoke his word into the planet. It came through prophecies 
and through the word of God. And as it did, Jesus manifested through his word. And the word is going to say this right here. Listen, verse 14, and the word became what? Now he becomes the only begotten of the Father. How many didn't know that? Woo, it's nice to learn things, isn't it? Amen. And uh, I love it. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld. Everyone say, behold. behold. We beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Why did God send his son? Well, there is probably a million reasons. Number one, to purchase us back from the devil who legally keeps us out with, of God because of Adam's sin. So he frees us from our sin. Let me ask you, how many sins did God forgive? Past, present, future. The idea is you're not a sinner saved by grace. You are a child of God. So stop walking around like a sinner, feeling guilty and bad. You're a child of the living God who contains God on the inside of you. And we're walking around like, come on now. And Satan goes, I got another one there. Look at that. Wandering around like some homeless person. You have a home. We dwell with God. We have a, a place for his word to abide in our hearts. Say amen. And the word became flesh and we dwelt among us. So they could touch him. They could see him. They could smell him. They could watch him eat. They could watch him live. They could hear him talk. They could hear him laugh. So they could write it all down that you and I can understand that this is what our heavenly father's like. Because the Jewish people, they didn't know a loving God. They only knew a fierce God that if you didn't do it right, the ground was going to open up and swallow you. Aren't you glad you're in the New Testament? <laughs> you're a child of God. You have God on the inside of you. So listen, Bunky. If God's on the inside of you, why would God send you in the mud and the crud and the flood? Why would he let the devil be the tool that beats you into subjection so you love God more? All of those things are taught in Christianity. Satan's lies. Listen, when my son played with matches, I didn't turn on the stove and put his hand over it and burn. That's, what is that called? Why do we blame God for the bad in this planet? It's not God doing it. He's trying to rescue us. Hello? Now, either grab the life preserver, the word of God, Wrap the word of God around you and let God yank you out of here. Amen. But if you don't know the word, you're going to still be hanging around where we're gone. We don't want that happening. Thank God. All right, let's look at this. Now, so the word became flesh so we could see it, we could analyze it, we could be written. Now, go with me to Luke 21. Look at verse 33. You see, we only have three studies a week. Three. When I first taught down at my first church, you know how many times a week I taught? Eight. And all of them were more attended than today. See, way back a few years, people really, really wanted to know God. But see, Satan has worked and worked and worked to try to tell the church you already know God. Yeah, you know. And so we've taken on the church generally, generally not you specifically, a nonchalant, lukewarm sort of attitude. And so where do we stand up? Where do we stand? Where do we not tread into? Where are the things, our boundaries? Well, it's in the word. The boundaries are in the word. The Bible says, never rebuke somebody that's older than you. Did you know that? 
It says, don't usurp authority. Do you know what usurping authority is? That's when you come into somebody else's house and you go into their refrigerator without asking. I'm just giving you simple lessons. So without knowing that, we could get ourselves in trouble just being a simple little Christian. So being a simple little Christian is good for the babies, but not good for the adults. Can you say amen? Babies don't make babies. Adults make babies. So I make disciples, but babies don't make disciples. Baby Christians need to learn and shut up. And don't get mad at me. They just need to learn and be quiet. We have two ears and... All right. I don't want to meddle too much because I don't want you getting mad at me, losing your salvation. All right. So the refreshingness of God's word. God's word is refreshing. Look at somebody and say, God's word is refreshing. It's like a shower. Okay, so let's look at what it says, all right? Go with me to Isaiah 55, please. The book of Isaiah. And while you're going there, Luke 21, 33 says, How heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will not pass away. So we need to stand on the word. Why? Because it won't ever change. Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. So that's why we build our life on him, because there's no double standards. There's no wishy-washiness. Can you say amen? All right. So Isaiah 55, verse 10, please. For as the rain comes down, and the snow from heaven, and, and does not return there, but waters the earth, and making it bring forth the bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Verse 11, so shall my word that goes forth out of my mouth, it shall not return to me void. Say void. void. God doesn't make anything void. He doesn't make anything. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? Chicken. The chicken. He never made an egg first. Let me ask you, did Adam, this is fun, Adam have a belly button? No. These are my 101 classes, you know. <laughs> Let's just go on past that. All right, so you got it? Look at this. All right. So shall my word that go forth out of my mouth, it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. How many here know that God's on your side? He loves you. Okay, it shall prosper. Everyone say prosper. That means you get healthy, you get wealthy, you get happier, you get peacefuler, you get, you're prospering in every degree because of the word and because of your relationship with God. Say amen. And if that ceases, go back to meeting with God and find out why. But it goes on further. So shall my word that goes forth out of my mouth it shall not return to me void. It shall accomplish as what I please and it will prosper in the thing that I've sent it. Everyone say, I am the thing he sent the word. I'm a container. I contain either good things or bad things. And listen, right there, you can stop right there, because I'm going to say this. You got them both. You got some bad, squirrely stuff up here that needs to be washed out. You know that part where you're challenged, and suddenly you say, well, poor me. What about, see, bad, 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 bad. First of all, me isn't your issue. God is your issue. The people that focus on me, 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 me all the time is all they can see is me, me, me all the time. When you want an answer, where do you look? You look to the word. You look to God. You don't look to the problem. Standing and looking at a problem, you're going, okay, God, it looks like a problem to me. And the more you stare at it, the bigger it gets. Hello. Moving right on past that. Listen. It shall not return unto me void. A couple of points I want to give you. Number one, God's word brings life and light. Everyone say life and light. Yeah, it says it right there in, in, in John 1.14. That his life is the light of men. His life, life, L-I-F-E, is the light, illuminous of man, okay? Two, 
The kingdom and dominion of God is built in us. Do you know how? How is the kingdom and dominion, the power of God built in us? By his word. So if you're never in it, you're only thinking about it. You got to get in it whether you understand it or not because it is medicine to all our flesh. It's the only gospel we can take that will heal all of us. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word. Well, if you ingest the word, you're ingesting God. Woo! <laughs> Let's ingest him. Amen. Do you remember John the Beloved reading some of his writings? Remember John the Beloved? What was he noted for? John the Beloved. Why was he called the Beloved? Because he was the guy that always told Peter, I'm God's favorite. He was the guy, Scott, that would yell shotgun whenever Jesus was around. He's the one that leaned on Jesus' bosom. But I want to tell you something God showed me. He says, the closer we get to God, the healthier, the untouchable we become to the devil. John, they couldn't kill him. Something got a hold of John, his walk, he understood how to walk with God that caused him to rise above the circumstances of life. They wanted to kill him, so they took him captive. And then they put him in a vat of oil, Fox's Book of Martyrs, you get a chance to read it. He sat there and played in the boiling oil, throwing it up in the air, and they went, oh my God, what are we going to do? Oh, I know what we'll do. I'm paraphrasing. Let's take John, who we can't kill on the mainland, let's put him on a little island of rocks, and let's have some quadrant of soldiers babysit him until he dies. We don't want him exposed to everybody else. They'll change everything. <laughs> Just like your life has changed so many people because of your faithfulness and prayer. Thank you, Lord. Now, let's get really into this. Everyone say, I'm, I'm a wordy. It's the breakfast of champions. I'm going to get you a t-shirt that says, wordies. I eat wordies. Can you say amen? I have some old phrases. People borrowed them to them all. You know, in fact, my, my church was the first one that says, come experience the difference. And everybody else now started copying and all that kind of. First one in the area, they had a warehouse church. Everybody else copied it. You know, and I said, Lord, what's going on here? He says, most of the church copy. They don't come in and see me for originals. We're parrots at times. We repeat what we hear, but we really don't know it. Don't do that. If you don't know how to lead somebody to this or do something with that, don't act like you do, because Satan will just nail you every time. You want that foundation of the word under your feet, so when the winds come and the floods blow and starts beating on you, you can smile and dance, because Jesus cannot be moved. And I stand on him. He's got his arms around me and he's covering me. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. All right, let's go on. Another point I want to give you, you go to Luke chapter 6, please. Luke 6 and stay there. Let me give you my last couple of points. The word of God gives us hope. Hope is like a thermostat in your house. And faith churns and works for the things that you hope for. Let me quote it for you. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders, that's you guys, obtained a good report. We know by faith in his word that their people's lives were changed. Can you say Amen. How about yours? And the more I can get you in the word, the more you study the word, the more changed you will be. You'll be literally a friend of God and the salt of the earth, a light, a city that cannot be hid. That is you. 
And listen to all that other junk God, the devil's been telling us. Don't listen. All right, move on. Everybody got it? Luke 6. Let's drop down to verse 46, please. Now, remember this is... Let's see if I can do this right. Remember, what testament is this in? All right, but let me clarify. The New Testament really, now think about it. I'm not trying to start something different. I'm not trying to, I'm just trying to get you to think. Before Jesus died and rose again, everything in the New Testament, in the Gospels, before Jesus died and rose again, were all Old Testament. It wasn't until Jesus rose again from the dead. Now, I'm not changing anything. Don't read more into what I'm saying. It wasn't until he rose from the dead that his preaching changed. That the preaching, teaching changed. Why? Because now for the first time, God could come and live into a human being. That's why Jesus died and rose again. Sits at the right hand, makes intercession for us. Amen. That's why it says in him we live and we move and we have our being. The Bible says that we're in Christ, hidden in God. So how in the heck is the devil going to get us out of there? He's going to have to get you to think about yourself and pull you out by suggesting lies to you. Now you know how he works. All right, so why do you call him? Now, this is Old Testament. He's talking to the Jews. The Jews always professed with their mouth, but they found themselves really, really not being able to follow the word. Now, listen to me. The Ten Commandments. Which one of you can follow all of them? None of you. The, the Ten Commandments were written to show mankind you can't save yourself. That's all it was written for. And it was written to the Jews, not to the Gentiles. And it says, look, you Jews, you can't save yourself. No, you're not going to be grandfathered in because you brought forth the Messiah. No, you need to confess your sin, accept Jesus in your heart, just like anybody else. Because now there's neither Jew nor Gentile, bond nor free, male nor female, but we're all in one Christ Jesus. So if God says it's going to work this way for everybody, it's going to work this way for everybody. Say amen. So he's talking to the Jews that are listening, and he says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things that I say? Now, please don't get this over sanctifiedness. Yeah, I blow it too. See, there you go, thinking about yourself. You're not to sit in this congregation thinking how terrible you are or what, how better you are. You're to be applying the word, trying to line yourself up with them. So don't call Jesus Lord except when you do what he says. Can you say Amen. You can't run around and say, Jesus is my Lord and your whole life is a ruin. And that's what Jesus was. He was not talking to his disciples. He was talking to the Jewish people sitting by, writing down his faults. Folks, have you ever met a Christian that could tell you everything that's wrong with you and you never asked? <laughs> Moving right along. Okay. Don't call him Lord and Lord unless you expect to do what he says. Amen. That's all. Whoever comes to me, notice you have to come to him. How should we come to him? How often should we come to him? And here's my sayings and does them. Comes to me, here's my saying, does them. Comes to me, here's my sayings, does them. Comes to me, here's my sayings and does them. You came to church today, so that's, that fits that, right? You go to prayer every day, right? That fits that, right? You come to him, you hear what he says, and you do it. Let's find out what he's saying. I will show you to whom he's like. He is like a man building a house, dug deep, and laid the foundation on a rock. Who's the rock, folks? Amen. And when the floods arise and the streams beat vehemently, against that house and could not shake it for it was founded on Jesus. He's the rock. Your life should be founded on Jesus. You should go to God with great respect and say, Lord, I don't want my life to get out of sorts. So I'm asking you to help me walk with you in harmony. 
work on the parts of my life that are not really blessing you, Lord. And Father, keep those people who condemn, those people that judge away from me so that you can minister to me and you can grow me up within myself. Everyone say, grow me up within myself. Remember we told you about the cocoon? You're that little caterpillar and you spun a real nest and you're in a cocoon that's called your flesh. This is not the real us. This is a cocoon so that you can talk in the earth, you can walk in the earth, you can experience your five senses. But this is not the original that God gave us. He gave us a body of light. We were Elohim under Elohim. You understand? Let me just say this to you. Remember the bush that Moses talked to? He looked and saw this bush that was what? You know who he was looking at briefly? God. He was staring at God. And what did he notice? It was like a bush. Now, God's not a bush. Amen. We had a couple bushes for president, but, you know. But anyway, but the idea of the bush, listen, and fire that doesn't consume, but it burns, and the brightness that he had to shield his eyes from, that was the picture of the original of God. No darkness, no broken branches. Everything was a part of God. And then Lucifer broke off. What Moses was staring at is the plan of God. And he says, I can't handle it. Hello, you are a branch. You are a branch. You are a branch. You are a branch. And we're to abide in the vine. As we abide in the vine or the word... The word comes up out of us and we begin to spindulate ourselves out of the cocoon. I'm not getting ahead of myself. What's the first thing when you drop a seed into the ground to plant? No wacky weed. <laughs> I'm joking with you. Come on. You got to be able to relate to your past. Otherwise, you're going to feel like I'm picking on you. And I don't want you to do that. You drop a seed in the ground. First thing it does is it dies. The old, the old shell cracks off. And the newness of life comes out. Well, what happens to a lot of Christians because they're not in the word? They're not in the word. They think they are, but they're not in the word. Some of that old shell is still hanging there. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I planted a lot of seeds back in my olden days. And some seeds you had to pop the old cap around it off so that the seed could, could grow. Listen. You better stop hanging on to your old seed shell. Hello? It needs to crack off so God can give you the life that he has promised you. But the only way that that can happen is for you have to stay in the word as well as in, in prayer. Say amen. amen. Now, he that hears my saying and does them. Hear the saying and does them. But the one that hears my sayings and does not do them, I'm quoting the second part, it's like a foolish man who laid his life on the earth, the sand. That term is you built your life on the sand. In other words, you invested your entire life on what you could get out of it. Now, I'm not picking on anybody because most people know that that's pretty basically noble, but to do it without God is not. What does it profit a man if he gained the whole world, the Bible says, and loses his own soul. Ooh, so there's some keys that we need to know. And only the word separates those keys. So you and I can walk full of joy. And walk full of peace. You know I'm a busy man. But I'm totally at rest. I'm not troubled by anything. Even people that are troubled. Quiet answer turns away wrath. Let's get to the bottom. Let's find out how we can fix it. Never make a decision when you're angry. Because it might take you years to return. Especially now, Satan will do his best to make sure you can't. I've been talking to a lot of Christians that have been away from God for a while. Because either they were hurt or offended. And they're coming back. But they're afraid they're going to get hurt and offended again. They need to know to die to themselves. Everyone say, die, die. to myself. Die. Say, die, die to myself. You see, if you're dead to your selfishness, 
No matter what anybody does or says, it's not going to affect you whereby you make a bad decision. Say amen, somebody. So a foolish man builds on the earth. You know better. Let's go on. A couple of points after that. I'm almost done with you. Many people profess the Lord Jesus Christ, but they don't follow him. We have a lot of professors of the gospel. This is a joke. But very few disciples. Everybody wants to be the teacher. We all want to influence people. But God says there's a worse judgment on you if you do it wrong. Gunk. Every time I pray in the morning, which is every morning, not that I'm, it's not a brag, please. I do that because I need to do that. I need to be soft. I don't need to be uptight. I don't need to be frustrated about things. The world is going to hell in a nutshell, it seems. But I don't need to be uptight. Who's going to come to who for leadership? The church, folks, all of our wonderful people like Billy Graham and Billy Sunday, they've all gone on to be with Jesus. Who's going to take the lead? Pat Robertson, 700 Club, he's getting ready to go on to be with Jesus. Who's going to take the lead? You look at TBN, the kids took over, but I don't hear anything about them anymore. You see, Satan is doing his best to pick off the generals. Now, God wants to raise up a few more. Do we have any volunteers? The Smith Wigglesworths, the people that move in the power of God, that our faith not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power and demonstration of God. That's what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Now, we must learn to hear the word. You've got two ears, one mouth. If you talk too much, please ask God to help you. Because talking too much without the wisdom will literally sow seeds and weeds. It says the multitude of words, man sins. Did you know it? Did you know Ecclesiastes 5? It says when you come into the house of God, be quiet rather than speak the sacrifice of fools. For they think they don't say evil by the multitude of words. Read it. I mean, again, this is not me telling you straighten up like a lot of people think. No, I'm just saying there are certain disciplines that God has to help us with. Say amen. All right. So last thing is life can be unfair. Robert Schuller years ago used to say, life at times is unfair, but God is not. I guess not when you got a crystal cathedral, it was all paid for. We always fault the people with the fancy stuff and everything like that, and they go, yeah, see that, and you see that, and you know this, and they always point in faults. Sh shut that down. If a man can live more than 60 years, he needs praise. <laughs> Woman too. This is a rough world. You're living in a sewer, folks. A beautiful earth that's full of sewage. And the Bible says you need to walk and keep yourself unspotted from the world. Unspotted. That means that you walk out through the world, somebody's going to spew something on you, and you don't even know it's on you. So when you go home, rebuke. You're out in the garden, and you want to cook a meal? Before you get to handling the meat, you better wash your hands. Is any of this practically ministering to you? All right, good. Then I've done my yielding job to the Lord. He gives me these sermons. I don't, I don't write them. I said, Lord, they know about the word. No, they don't. Preach this sermon. Okay. All right, so go with me to Luke, and we'll finish with you. Luke chapter 8. We need to embrace the word. To embrace the word with love and respect. Say amen. We need to embrace the word with love and respect. We're going to go to the parable of the sower. By having love and respect for the word of God, it reveals to us how we grow. So let me just say this to you, and you be your own judge, not any of us. But if you are growing and you're learning, good. But if you see a Christian that's been with the Lord like 
30, 40 years, and they still don't know any more than when you first met them. Not good. I know people I knew years and years ago, nobody you know, that have never bothered to get in the Word, they've never bothered to build a prayer life, and when you hear them talk, you can't tell the difference between the world and them. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And if you're dwelling on everything else but the word, then what's going to come out of you if I squeeze you is all this junk. I love sitting back and listening to Christians. If you can get me to quit talking, Scott. And sit back and listen because you can hear people talk. And see, there's one thing Satan does, and then we'll finish. Is he exchanges religion with a personal walk. He lets you know you're religious. Now, how many here know that we are a spirit, we have a soul, and we live in an earth suit, a body, right? How many know you don't pamper the earth suit too much because it will choke you to death? It will swell up like a balloon? Hello? Do all kinds of crazy things. You're to take the earth suit and give it to God, let God pulverize it, then put it back on, let it serve you. But you have a soul, too. Let me tell you something. Here, we don't appeal to the soul. Listen. The music I choose is very biblical. It is according to the word. You're not going to hear religious things. What do you mean? It only takes a mountain to crush me into the will of God. That is religious, and it doesn't glorify God. I remember this old song came out. Everybody loved it, but only the immature. And that was, it was, had a really neat beat to it. It was, leave the back door crack because God's going to slip on through the back door. Waka, 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 waka. And everybody said, well, I really like that song. I said, have you heard the words? Open up your back door so God can slip in. But we hear a beat, see? See, I'm a drummer. I hear beats. I, I listen to some secular music, not the ones that worship the devil. But I like good beats. Why? Because I, I want to practice them, you see. If you're a guitar player, piano player, you do the same thing. You just maybe don't know. So catch this. We must embrace the word. So let's look at it. Luke 8, 11 through 15. Now, Jesus told a parable about the word and the kingdom of God, okay? And he used metaphors like the birds coming and taking the seed and that the, the word is sown on stony ground, what that is, and on thorny ground, what that is. But let me say this. You are the ground. When the word is sown, the condition of how you hear is the condition on how you'll grow. So, if you are preoccupied, you can come to a sermon like this and not get a thing out of it. And then the devil said, well, you got credit for showing up. <laughs> Hello? You know, it, it doesn't get a thing out of it. So, but what you need to understand, I just, this is so precious, Okay? In our soul, we want to be religious, but in our spirit, God lives. So when you come to church, you leave all your problems in the car. You don't discuss your personal problems within the body. You go to your elders and your leaders so that they can pray for you properly. Do not be a Christian that gives free advice all the time. Okay? Why? Because if it isn't biblical, you're going to be in trouble. If you are a Christian, and maybe you've done something, you felt really, really grieved God, let me tell you something. That's not the end of the world. Go on. Keep going. Many times I've, I've failed. But it isn't the failure. It's the getting up and following God. You just get up right away and you follow God and say, help me, Lord. You don't sit in the mud puddle and splash yourself and go, woe is me. 
I guess I'll sit in my room, play my video games all the time. I don't know, but you see what I'm saying? Satan wants us not to become active and be transformed like God says. Okay, let's look at how to do that. Everyone say, the word of God will transform me if my head doesn't talk me out of it. So let's listen to this. I read it to you. This is Luke 8, 11 through 15. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside, que sera, sera, are the ones that hear, then the devil comes. You see, when new people come to church, you older people sit, get names, prayer, this kind of thing, because Satan is going to drop on their head when they leave. Unless they really, really mean it with God. And that's what he does. I see people, they'll come to church and everything like that, and the devil will get on them and, and sell them on a lie. And then they're not going to church anymore. They're sort of doing their own thing. We know who that is. You know a tree by what it does. The fruit it bears. All right, so the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are the ones that hear the word, but the devil comes immediately to steal the word that's sown in their hearts. Lest they should believe and be saved. But the ones on the rock or on the stony ground are those who, when they hear, they receive the word with joy. These have no root or purpose within themselves, who believe only for a while, but in times of temptation, they fall away. Are you with me? Now the ones that fell among the thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked by the cares cares as worries and the riches oh I tell you what you got a brand new boat we never see you at church anymore and the pleasures of life and bring it to no fruit so folks the worst thing for a Christian is the secret tools the enemy uses first is the cares of this life the world is passing away now, the first thing I did is I invested $30,000 of my inheritance in the stock market. In two weeks, I lost $30,000 in the stock market. But, you know, if my hope was in that, I'd be devastated. But my hope wasn't in that. God said to me, easy come, easy go. Use wisdom next time. Did I tell you to invest? No. You know, so... I'm trying to just let you know, okay, some, some basic things. So, we see wayside ground, right? We see rocky ground. And then we see thorny or weedy ground. Cares of life, riches, and lots of other things. And then we're going to see good ground. Everyone say good ground. That's me. Say it. Good ground, that's me. See, when you come to church, you come to church with your spirit listening here you you shut this down as a gather of information not as a dictation over the word that's being spoken so in other words quiet your mind down when the word's coming forth because it will run on trips something will pop up in you and suddenly your mind will run on that and you'll miss the next five or six phrases get to know yourself a little better amen when I sit and come to a sermon or somebody else's church, I come to learn everything. I'm writing, I'm looking, I'm listening because God's going to speak to me. Hello. Could you imagine how Balaam must have thought? I mean, Linda. Here, Balaam the prophet. They gave him lots of money to prophesy against Israel. And Balaam's going to do it because he's going to be a millionaire. And guess what? He gets ready to do it, and the donkey speaks to him. He says, you better not do that, lest God smite you. <laughs> Listen, don't be a dum-dum and have some kind of donkey talk to you. Let's listen to the Lord. Can you say amen? <laughs> Let's be attentive to the things of God so we don't miss anything that he might want for us. He's on our side. He wants the best for us. And finishing. But those on good ground, who are those who receive the word, 
okay? And, and they heard it and have a noble and good heart. Everyone say noble and good. Say noble and good. Let me just tell you, noble means you're stately. You walk around not as you're special, but you walk around as a king and queen that God made you. Hello. So you don't walk around with your head down. You know, woe is me. No, hold your head up, not in pride, and know that God is on your side. You are a citizen of the kingdom of God. You have his word, you have his armor, you have his light. Amen. You have his angels, you have his covenant, you have his name. What in the world does the devil have? Lies and deception to talk you out of what you have. He has to borrow his. Jesus stripped him and finishing. So those that fear and respect the Lord with a good and noble heart are the ones that grow experientially or they grow exceedingly quick. Everyone say, why is it that certain Christians grow really quick and other ones don't grow so quick? The word. The word. I like to go to our church because of the music. Well, we had a nice band, but the COVID hit. You stop going to church now because you don't have the nice music? See how solely in the soul you're living? Well, I want to go to a big church because I hope to find a wife. Wrong reason to go to church. Because usually the broken ones go there. They're getting fixed too. Look up at me. I'm not picking on you. I'm just talking to you. So there are a lot of times that we have expectations that we want God to do for us. Let them be God's expectations. They're very good. But let them not be our expectations. You see, if you expect certain things to turn out a certain way, when they don't, will your life be devastated? If you thought you were doing good and you got corrected, is your whole day ruined, Bunky? No. So we got to begin to filter ourselves, align ourselves up with the word of God so that we're untouchable for the things of the enemy and his lies. Say amen. amen. And we become very pliable and teachable in the presence of God. Amen. And the Bible says that we will focus on Jesus, that we as a looking in a glass, he transformed us into the same image from glory to glory. But oftentimes, we as a Polaroid camera are not looking at Jesus. We're looking at what we don't have. And we're looking, now listen, I'm preaching to you, okay? But I, I love you, okay? We're looking at what's wrong. You're looking at things that divide people up, and yet you're not the Savior. Remember what happened to Moses. God told Moses on the backside of the desert, I'm sending you to be a Savior to get the Israelites out of the bondage of Egypt. So what did he do? He stormed right on in there, and the first rebellious Egyptian he saw, he beat him to death with his fists, thinking he was going to be the Savior. Well, yes. But that cost him 40 years of his life because he took matters in his own hands. Listen. Listen. Don't take matters in your own hands. Pray. You have an almighty God that this problem that you see is not too big for God. It says, through faith and patience, we inherit the promises. Abraham. How long did he have to wait before he could have a child that God promised him? Hurry up. You know, telling his wife, hurry up and believe God. Hurry up and believe it. Oh, I'm tired of you wanting to have kids. Here, have my servant. Can you imagine that? Making decisions in the flesh because you're all upset over something. You better sit still and talk to God till you have a peace. Okay? Because God's a fixer. He's a fixer, not a terror apart. He doesn't divide us. Hello? 
So if you're listening to something that's dividing you away from everybody and irritate, people are starting to irritate you, you're still a teenager. You need to die. Don't get mad at everybody. There was a time in my walk I learned so much that I thought I knew everything. I wouldn't come to church with one Bible. I came to church with two and a briefcase. I was going to take over the world. We get like that because it's natural for God to bring us out of ourselves and be a leader. But don't be like Moses and take things in your own hands. Okay? Rely on the grace of God to work it out. Can you say amen? amen. All right. Now, I love this. God brings us out of ourself. Just let me read it to you. Romans 12, 1 through 2. God brings us out of ourself. And it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, isn't he merciful, that you, your spirit man, present your body a living sacrifice, which is holy and acceptable and is what you're supposed to be doing, your reasonable service. Hello. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What do we renew our mind with? The word of God. Your mind tells you you're nothing. You'll never amount to anything. You're always going to be this way, but the word of God says you're a champion. You're blessed going in and blessed going out. So which one do you want to act on? Which one do you want to believe? Well, I just want people to quit picking on me. I know that if people quit picking on me, then I'm walking right with God. Listen, Jesus said, if you are pleasing God, not everybody is going to love you. In fact, people will hate you because you're smiling too much. Hey, I got people still mad at me. When I go down into the store, they run. I'd like to go over the other side and course me. Hey, what are you running from? God? I mean, I'm not joking. So sometimes I like to sit and talk to you about all the things I've experienced through 40 plus years of ministry. All the good things, mostly good. All right. So we're supposed to conform to the word. Say amen. All right. Then finally, James tells us why. James 1.18. Of his own will and word brought us forth by the word of truth, that, he might, that we might be a kind of first fruits of God's creation. So we get the word in here. God brings us up out of ourself. Now, we can resist him at any time by not letting ourselves develop. That means you've got to trust God. Do you realize you've never been in this day before? This is the first day that you've been in today? And tomorrow will be another first day? Why don't you look at him that way? You get up in the morning, you address God, you say, God, it's you and I, mostly you, and let's have an adventure today. Show me things. Open my eyes. Let me see. Do you talk to God that way? Why not? Why not? He's just waiting to become our friends. He's just waiting to help us. Oh, Pastor Kerry, I know God's busy. I don't want to bother him with all my problems. You better, lest you be left behind. So, do you still love me? How many of the you still? Love me? How many got something really personal out of the word today? Good. Wave. It's all right. You should all have gotten something because God lined it all up for you. He even switched some of my thing. See, when the Holy Spirit is ministering, He takes the lead. I follow. So if He says stop, make a statement. I do. And if He says emphasize this, I do. I didn't used to be that way. I used to just do my own thing and hope it all worked out. <laughs> you guys, look up at me and go like this. Come on. See, I got my daughter and her husband and maybe their families and all that. People, I'm just so glad because we want to give the word of God. I told the Lord, this is it, okay? I told the Lord, Lord, I crumbled and I crashed pretty hard. 
And the way I was told is that God will never use you again. You might as well just be a servant somewhere. But I went to God and I said, Lord, I know I let you down. I know I, I did some things that were wrong. And he says, yeah, why are you telling me? This is no surprise to me. <laughs> we always feel like we've got to inform God because he doesn't quite know our situation. Come on, smile up at me. And I told him, Lord, I don't ever want to be away from you. I don't ever want, you know, to do anything like this again. He says, son, I'm the only one who can keep you from it. And the problem was is you got your eyes on the big church and the big bit and traveling around and speaking and doing it a certain way. You, your prayer life started to suffer and your word life started to suffer. And then you moved from the realm of the spirit up into the realm of the understanding. I'm just telling you about myself. So, so when I started again and I had to go through all of the things and talk to God, he says, now, son, are you ready? I says, I guess. And he says, now this is your time. I told you that it would be towards the end of your life that I would use you mightily, not the beginning. All right? And you were used mightily in the beginning. And I asked him, I said, as soon as I thought about it, he said, because you know more when you're older. Can you say amen? You see what Paul said it this way, and then we'll pray for you. He said, when I was a child, I spoke like a child. I acted like a child. I even rode my tricycle. But when I became a man, I put away childish things by the help of the Holy Spirit. So let's pray with you. Let's bless the food. And I hope you got the word of God. Now take it home and nurture it. Let God build it in you, okay? So say this with me, dear Heavenly Father, I believe with all my heart that this word was for me. Work it out in my spirit. Work it out in my understanding. Help me become obedient to you, Lord. Lord, I surrender my will. I'm not going to make my choices for you. I'm going to let you make my choices for me. And Father, I surrender again. And fill my life with hope and faith and excitement. Because this is the first day of the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, some of you felt...